Looking for local? Even more local? CCX Media gives you the option to connect with your community on multiple levels. CCX Create welcomes you, community residents, to connect and experience television in an exciting way. The free TV classes we offer will have you on your way to creating TV, and our wide variety of content can be watched at home or on the go. Connect to what's happening in your community. Visit ccxmedia.org. Hi, this is Bob Kaufman. I'm your guest host today on Free Thinking Forum, and I'm going to be spending my time and yours interviewing a man named Bill Weir, who's the permanent host of Free Thinking Forum. This is an 83-year-old man who's planning to live to be 130 years of age. We're going to find out this stuff and much more, I hope, today about Bill. Bill, tell me, why is an 83-year-old man planning to live to 130 years of age, and how are you planning to do it? Well, I stopped increasing my goal at the age of 65. Okay. Uh, back at when I was 40, mm -hmm. I decided I should set a goal. Mm -hmm. And I set a goal twice my age. Mm -hmm. And I kept moving it up year by year. Mm -hmm. At 60, I was planning to live to be 130. Not planning, really, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Did you mean 120? 120, yes. Okay. And at 65, I decided that was as far as I could go. Okay. And I, I already have several nice ladies lined up to dance with me on my 130th birthday. Okay, so that's a reward. Oh, yes. Okay. How are you planning to do it? Well, I, I, as of now, I have to fly to Maui, uh -huh. uh, um, Old Faithful in uh -huh. Yellowstone Park, okay. and the Greek island of Santorini. Okay, that's what you're going to do on your 130th? Yes. Okay, but how are you going to make it? Oh, how, well, I've just got the best care in the world. Okay. Medically. Medically, good care. And, and the best uh, sweetheart in the world. Okay, love's in love is in your life. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the best crew in the world. Mm -hmm. For your show. Yes. So, Bill, you've been around for 83 years now, okay? Yeah. You've actually created a whole life, and you can talk to us about that life. Tell me a little bit about yourself and sort of what was the formative stuff that, that sort of formed Bill Weir as we see him today? Well, Number one, when my parents married in 1930, mm -hmm. they knew they could never have a child. Mm. But they came across a, uh, an obstetrician who assured them, I will do, I have new ways of keeping both mother and child alive. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to try it, mm -hmm. I'm willing to do that. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And when I arrived, I felt like the most treasured child in the world. Mm -hmm. And my, my parents decided not to have another child, simply to avoid endangering mm -hmm. my mother. Okay. And so you were so, an only child? Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, it led me to being experienced in business early on. Mm -hmm. uh, working in my father's hardware store, uh, getting where was that? Oh, in Winnipeg. In Winnipeg, right, right by the Canadian Pacific so Railway Cana Station. So you're a Canadian. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm I'm an American. Uh, uh, when I was appointed to a citizens advisory committee on urban renewal, I decided, I guess it's about time I become a citizen. Okay. So you, you that was in Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. So you came in, you came from Canada and are now a U.S. citizen. At the time, you were living in Portland, Maine. Well, I was living in Rockland, Maine. 
the right. lobster capital of the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine mm -hmm. uh, living in a, a friend's summer home in in the spring mm -hmm. before she moved in there mm -hmm. and with my family mm -hmm. and ha having a, a bucket of live lobster delivered to your back door. Wow. My wife called our host, mm -hmm. uh, who was living in nearby Rockport, mm -hmm. and <laughs> she said, eat them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we <laughs> proceeded to invite a number of uh, parishioners uh, mm -hmm. over to have a wonderful time. And what were you doing in Maine at that time? I was then the minister of the First Universalist Church of Rockland, Maine. And when was this? What year? Oh, let's see, 19, oh, so, 65. 1965, so you were how old? Oh, no, I'm, I'm misspeaking. No, this, this must have been in uh, 1951. 1951, and how old were you? Uh, at, born in 34, so. Uh, so that would make you 27. Yes. Okay, you're 20, and did you have kids at the time? Well, we added a few kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, left there with, uh, with three mm -hmm. and and why did you decide that you wanted to spend a great portion of your life as a universalist minister well uh, actually more precisely unitarian universalist Un okay. the, the two denominations both christian denominations mm -hmm. merged okay at that about that time okay and uh, i felt that they were closest to what made sense to me okay uh, where i could use all of my scientific background. I'd earned a degree in physics. Okay, and <laughs> where, where was your physics degree? Oh, from? at Rice University. At Rice, down in Texas? Yes, okay. Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd, I'd graduated from high school in Texas. And oh, did you? this was the, uh, mm -hmm. a, a place that gave full tuition mm -hmm. to everyone coming in. Wow. We had to be in the top 10% of our class mm -hmm. or to even be considered. But you were, and you got it. Yes, mm -hmm. and it was a, a great time mm -hmm. in college. And then after college, um, I became uh, sure that I did want to go on to prepare for the ministry. That must be wonderful to be sure. I've never been sure, so that's <laughs> great. <laughs> well, yes, it was great. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, Tuition free. And how long were you a practicing minister? Uh, I'm still practicing, so to speak. Okay. But perhaps you mean active. Uh, how I have a pulpit, <laughs> a congregation. A congregation. Okay. Yes. Uh, it was uh, more than ten years. What? Something you know, twelve okay. years probably. Okay. So that that uh, so. You, you spent 12 years with a congregation. Yeah. So now you're in your, now you're in your, um, you're around 40 years of age. Yeah. Okay, what happened then? Well, um, I decided that I could, uh, from my experience in Iowa City, uh -huh. um, I could perhaps do better without a congregation, just working in, in the community. Okay. And this was the community, Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh -huh. that most attracted me because it seemed that here, more than any other metropolis, people uh, worked on solving problems before they got out of hand. Mm. Okay. We don't all solve them all, but mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we do uh, typically have been concerned mm -hmm. to solve problems before so they a, get out of hand. You made a shift in your career here. Well, you might say, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, tell me more about that. Well, I found other ways to earn money to support me and my family, mm -hmm. and uh, all legal. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, selling securities, for one thing. Okay. Um, and, and insurance, mm -hmm. and uh, 
I just managed to find ways to minister, being active. Uh, one of the things that happened in Iowa City mm -hmm. was that uh, a federal communications commissioner okay. who was a member of my congregation okay. told me that there would soon be uh, public access channels uh -huh. at almost every cable system. Okay. And he hoped that I made use of them. All right. And uh, I finally was in a district uh, that had cable television mm -hmm. in 19, uh, let's see, 675. Yes, okay. And uh, this enabled me to uh, uh, begin a television program, uh, learning about what were the services related to community mental health. Okay, was that up here in the Twin Cities? No, this was in a depressed area of Connecticut. Of Connecticut. And my job at that time was mm -hmm. creating a community mental health services in the, for this uh, area called the Lo N Lower no Nogatuck Valley okay. of Connecticut, a uh -huh. depressed area. Uh -huh. and, and I was able to, in less than a year, get things developed to the point where they had uh, the beginnings of a community mental health center. Wow. Um, with the help of the, the uh, uh, service in New Haven. Okay, the, the mental health yes. service in New Haven. Right. And how did community television add to that effort? Well, it was, I, I invited the heads of various agencies that related uh, to mental health mm -hmm. uh, to come on to the television program for an interview. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, we discovered every time mm -hmm. that uh, the Lower Nogatuck Valley needed additional community mental health services. Mm -hmm. And here I was involved in setting it up. So you, it was a form of networking for you. Which Indeed. You, yeah. So and you, and complimenting them uh -huh. as well on their work, mm -hmm. okay. and it that's part of what made it possible within a year mm -hmm. to get things going. And where did you go from there? I I wanted to return to Minnesota, okay, because my four children were here with their okay. mother, and okay. uh, we had pledged mm -hmm. as we parted mm -hmm. uh, that I would. Uh, still be the best possible father I could be as she uh, did the same as mother mm -hmm. and it, <laughs> even this last Thanksgiving day when we went to her home mm -hmm. uh, to be with all our kids mm -hmm. uh, we agreed yes we have accomplished that well that's a, I have to tell you that's a very hard thing to accomplish I come from a father who was married and divorced six times and a mother who was married three times, divorced twice, okay? Yeah. And my father always came on the weekends whenever he was in town, always came on Thursdays. Divorce is a very difficult thing, so I'm glad you did that for your children. Well, we tried and maintained good uh, working relations, uh -huh. even, uh, even With as your ex-wife. Yeah. So now you're back here in the Twin Cities, okay? And, and yes, I found a job at the Minnesota Department of Health. Okay. Uh, and com drawing on my degree in physics as yes. well as okay. uh, in ministry. Mm -hmm. And this was to figure out how the radiation control information system of the Minnesota Department of Health okay. could be computerized. Okay. <laughs> and so I learned uh, through interviews with the people on the staff there, mm -hmm. including, of course, this was, the this was in the late 1970s. Uh, no, uh, yeah, well, yes, uh, 76. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it, it all, it worked out so well that the Minnesota Department of Health published what I had created. And what you had accomplished, what you yeah, had created. Yeah, for other states, apparently. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> so, uh -huh. and, and also to inform those who would be providing input to the uh -huh. radiation control, uh, uh -huh. 
uh, what, uh, what to expect, mm -hmm. to have to know uh, about radiation in their uh, jurisdiction. And how long did you work for the state in that position? Uh, three years. Okay. They kept finding more and more jobs for me. Okay. <laughs> I worked up to the point where uh, I was working with the state epidemiologist, okay. very high position. Who is the state epidemiologist? Andrew Dean at that okay. point. Mm -hmm. And he, he was on loan from mm -hmm. the Center for Disease Control okay. and, and helping uh, mm -hmm. uh, another person get mm -hmm. ready to be an epidemiologist, okay. uh, highly regarded. Uh, and uh, that worked out so well. What were you doing he, as a state epidemiologist? He, he and I worked on developing a, a way for indexing uh, not just mortality, people's deaths yeah. in Minnesota, but uh, morbidity and the cost of care. Wow. Uh, so that decision makers could see mm -hmm. which uh, c categories of uh, disorders, mm -hmm. diseases, a including mm -hmm. accidents, mm -hmm. uh, w were making, taking lives, years of life lost. Mm -hmm. So this was focused on a different way of looking at this, uh, different from even the uh, one that had been developed by the uh, head of the Center for, uh, for Health Statistics. Yeah, I mean, when, I, when I hear this, I think about uh, how, m how much we must have advanced over the last 40 years in terms of the tools that we have to work with oh, yes. to determine these kinds of things. It also makes me wonder just how gifted you are statistically. You probably have a little bit of a math brain going on. Well, at least I can spot errors. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I may not be able to do it all again. Okay. But uh, all right, so that's three years doing that. Okay. Yeah. You're now about forty-five years old. What are you yeah. doing then? Well, um, I I had been enlisted by the head of uh, the otolaryngology department of the University of Minnesota. Otolaryngology. Yes. Yeah. This, and, uh -huh. and uh, which includes the ears, right. uh, because there was a new hearing center as part of the university. Okay. Uh, and it had been uh, funded for the most part, but there, there is more mm -hmm. that had to be done, another million dollars plus. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what a million dollars was actually, what, a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he asked me to put together a, a representative uh, a group of people concerned with hearing health uh -huh. and uh, th then work with them, uh, so, uh, getting a committee to raise the million dollars. Wow. And uh, 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 Stan Hubbard and his wife, who uh -huh. was a member of my committee, uh -huh. uh, uh, worked together and mm -hmm. we had telethons on Channel 5, on Channel for, 5 for a number of years. To raise this money. On Labor Day weekend. Uh-huh, all for, uh, for, uh, what was the name, uh, uh, the For the Lions International 5M Hearing Center. Hearing Center. Of the University of Minnesota. Mm-hmm, okay. And so. Uh, so you did that work, that was a job actually. Well, it, it, naturally all volunteer work. Okay. I, I specialize in volunteer work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and it, it gave me great joy to uh, see th that place outfitted to serve almost every need that could be found in, in hearing health. So let's talk about great joy for just a second. Okay. Okay. I've so, had a lot of it. So um, it's my experience that most people do not have a lot of great joy. Really? Yes, that's my experience. They have some joy, but they don't have a lot of great joy. But you have had a lot of great well, joy. Well, I have, yes. Okay, tell me what, so do you disagree with me about most people not experiencing a lot of great joy? Well, I find, I mean, my kids seem to express joy mm -hmm. and, uh, and, even 
uh, in, in relationships that may have come to an end. Mm -hmm. There was great joy even mm -hmm. in those times. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone left better off than before. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so. Okay. I, but I that was an experience of great joy for you. Oh, indeed. Okay. To, to see that. Uh, eighth floor of the Phillips Wagon scene sure, building. Sure, the Phillips Wagon, I know it very well. Good. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I, w I went on from there to mm -hmm. work for Starkey Laboratories. Okay, what did you do for Starkey because, Laboratories? Uh, and uh, I, I made a film uh -huh. on how to create an in-the-ear hearing aid. Okay. For teaching new employees how to do it okay. all over the world. Okay, so you weren't actually creating the, 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 the hearing aid, but you made a film. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And th that too. How did you happen to come across this? Well, uh, <laughs> the, the owner of Stark Laboratories mm -hmm. uh, had known of my work with. Uh, W w with the university mm -hmm. and saw that I was mm -hmm. uh, still involved in okay. helping them and so he w when I had to I had to leave uh, state employment because I'd run into the three-year limit okay. for uh, non what is it they, some category where they have a three-year limit in other words Nobody should have a job. If you're unclassified if you're, employee. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I had not n known about that limit. Uh, but you found out. In advance <laughs> and mm -hmm. far enough ahead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But I became an employee of uh, Starkey, Starkey Labs. Labs. That's great. And I had a great time getting How long did you work for Starkey Labs? Uh, again, it was only one year mm -hmm. that led to mm -hmm. uh, something else. And what did it lead to? Well... I, I had been concerned about people's financial preparation for their later years. Yeah. And you have too, I'm I, sure. I'm sure I have, yeah. But, and I, I tried to learn how to be an estate planner. Okay. Mm -hmm. With um, uh, Connecticut General. Sure, okay. And I think I helped some people, but uh, I, hope so. I think I was not as good at selling uh, mm -hmm. as I needed to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I learned enough that mm -hmm. Prudential hired me okay. to teach uh, others in their plans. Okay. And one of the things that they entrusted me with was uh, a plan for uh, very small uh, employee groups. Sure. Ten or less. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. So I was flying around to uh, Omaha and Detroit and, mm -hmm. and so on to uh, help them get to acquainted with this new product. Mm -hmm. Was it called a Simplified Employee Pension Plan? What was it called? Well, yes. That, that was part of it, mm -hmm. this pension. Okay. But... Uh, it all wrapped together pretty nicely. Okay. But. <laughs> so you at, worked for The Rock. I worked for The Rock. Okay. For a time. And uh, along came a, a new spin-off of General Electric. Okay. That attracted my attention. It was right up my alley. Okay. In terms of physics and uh and, and public access channels and, and service hmm. through uh, innovation. Uh, we... What was this? Well, community information systems okay. of Chaska, or rather, uh, uh, well, Chaska, Minnesota, Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan. I remember, is there still a Jonathan? Well, it's still there, yes. Uh -huh. uh, but. We put I in had great the hopes first, for that when I was younger. I I was excited by being part of the first mm -hmm. 
bi-directional cable television system in the world. Okay. Using uh, something that, that the president had developed when he was with General Electric. Okay, the president of? Of Community Information okay. System. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was working very well to help the schools mm -hmm. uh, provide uh, teaching mm -hmm. and uh, a teacher in one place could serve all mm -hmm. of the elementary schools at one time, mm -hmm. for example. And right, through, through this public uh, through, TV. Yeah. Not through the public TV, but through a private system. Right, a private system that would go out to the, to the schools. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so if you had a great teacher in one particular area, they could teach yeah. here and it could go out everywhere. And it, in some sense, it was the beginning of what is now a flourishing industry of, right. of uh, uh, providing teaching through the Internet. And it will be, I think, flourish more. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we also connected the hospital and several clinics mm -hmm. so that the doctors, mm -hmm. with the help of the nurses mm -hmm. who were with the patient, mm -hmm. could diagnose and prescribe. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Even though they were, might be at an, another clinic or the and hospital. And this was through General Electric. How long did you a, work? A spin-off from okay. General Electric. Yes. And how long did, that, did you work for that spin-off? <laughs> Uh, it was just a uh, couple of years. Oh, that sounds like an interesting job, actually. But it prepared me mm -hmm. uh, as I became acquainted with other uh, parts of the exciting, mm -hmm. d innovative developments. Mm -hmm. I became associated with a wind turbine manufacturing company okay. here in Minnesota. Okay, what was it called? Minnesota Wind Power. Okay. And I've heard, I, of, that, I've heard of that company. I had the pleasure of bringing mm -hmm. the governor of Minnesota to, uh, to turn on the uh -huh. largest wind power system between California uh -huh. and Denmark. Wow. Three wind turbines mm -hmm. to be owned by the city of Marshall, Minnesota. Marshall, Minnesota. Yeah. That's because they have wind there. Yes. Yeah. We have wonderful wind uh -huh. through a good part of our state. Uh -huh. a and uh, I was proud to be part of this uh, innovative approach and, and took part in the uh, uh, state association for uh -huh. wind power. And when did you stop working for wind power? Uh, it was what, five years, maybe. Oh, that's good. And that's good. Uh, we, uh, one of the things that, that we did when I was vice president mm -hmm. was get the uh, state legislature to recognize mm -hmm. that a small wind turbine mm -hmm. on a farmer's property mm -hmm. is a farm implement. How so? It's a farm implement. Uh, and and there, they classified it as a farm implement. Yeah, and, and that l led it to uh, not require sales tax. Ah, good. So many more farmers mm -hmm. would be the government ready to gave go up ahead. collecting sales tax. Yeah, they, they wanted the wind power. It's a miracle. Okay. Bill, it was great talking to you and getting to know a little bit about your background. I can see why you are such, a, um, uh, such an active person at 83 years old. Your mind is always active and you're always willing to reach out. It's been great getting to know you. Thank you. Take care. And thank you for tuning in.